Do you believe that history tends to repeat itself more often than not? If you're like most, you probably answered yes. Have you ever asked yourself what kind of return on investment the stock market is said to yield over the long term, such as 100 years? The answer is usually around 8 to 10 percent. So let's split the difference and say it's 9 percent. Here's how it works. Over the very long run, 6 to 7 percent comes from growth and 2 to 3 percent comes from dividends. What if that 6 to 7 percent growth came in clumps over long periods of time? What if, historically, there were long periods of time where the market yielded zero growth and long periods of time when the market yielded double-digit growth? If these periods alternated throughout history in a predictable and repeatable fashion, would you want to have access to this information? Well, as it turns out, it's true. Let's look at what history shows us going back to the beginning of the 20th century, from 1900 through 1921. You would see that during this period, there were many good years and many bad years, but the good years and bad years all ended up washing each other out. Ultimately, after that 21-year period, the stock market experienced zero growth. Then, from 1921 to 1929, during the Roaring Twenties, we had a great period. It was a very exciting time in our country. However, if you remember from your history books, the market crashed in 1929. And from then until 1954, we had yet another period in the market that resulted in zero growth. After that, from 1954 to 1966, America was on top of its game and the markets did well again. However, in 1966, we went into another bear market, one of the shortest in U.S. history, until 1982. Once again, the good years and bad years all canceled each other out, resulting in zero growth during that 17-year period. Then, of course, in 1982, the stock market took off, and between 1982 and 2000, we had the best bull market run in U.S. history. So, according to history, roughly how long is the average bear market? If you said right around 20 years, you would be correct. Throughout history, we've consistently had about 20 years of bear market followed by slightly shorter bull markets, followed by more bear markets, and so on and so forth. Unfortunately, from 2000 to 2013, the stock market experienced two major drops of more than 50%. After it was all said and done, those 13 years represented another period of zero growth for stock market investors. What's interesting is that when you look at the years between 2000 and 2013, many analysts believe the bear market could not be over because it would be the first time in stock market history that we exited one of those zero growth periods after only 13 years. In fact, if you go back to the 1800s, you'll see that these cycles look quite similar. That is why many analysts believe that we were still in a bear market following 2013. But that wasn't the only reason. They also believe this to be the case because every zero growth period we've seen in history has had at least three major drops. We've never recovered from a long-term bear market cycle until after the market has experienced at least three major drops and recoveries, and we had only experienced two between 2000 and 2013. There are also certain financial ratios known as price-to-earnings ratios, or P&E ratios, that can affect the market as well. Stock market history shows that we have never recovered from a long-term bear market cycle until P&E ratios fell into the single digits. That never happened during the two major drops we experienced between the years of 2000 and 2013. You might wonder where P&E ratios are now. Well, the current P&E ratio for the S&P 500 as of February 2021 is 39.85. Although the P&E ratio for the S&P 500 did drop to 14.87 in January of 2012, it never reached the single digits. That is why many people wondered if we had permanently recovered from the bear market cycle in 2013. If so, it would mean the current stock market had broken three world records at the same time. For the first time in history, the stock market would have recovered from a long-term bear market cycle after only 13 years. It would have recovered without three major drops and recoveries, and would have recovered without P&E ratios falling into the single digits. However, to many people's surprise, the market took off after 2013 and proceeded to reach new highs in 2021. This led many to believe that we had indeed broken three world records and entered into a new bull market cycle. 
others thought that this was not the case, pointing to the unprecedented level of the artificial stimulus by the Federal Reserve that helped the S&P 500 break through the 1520-point glass ceiling that had existed since 2000. Then in March of 2020, thanks to the COVID-19 pandemic, the S&P 500 dropped by 33.9%. By August, the market had recovered its losses and proceeded to reach new highs once again. So the question becomes, was this the third drop? Purists would say no, because in order for it to count as the third drop, the S&P 500 would have had to fall below the 1520 point resistance level. Others say that it was. They believe the drop in March would have broken through that previous resistance level, had it not been for the quick and superhuman efforts by the Fed and Congress in the form of the CARES Act and the $3 trillion in stimulus that artificially kept the market from breaking below that level. So which group is correct? Do we still need to experience another major drop, or have we already experienced it and are ready to move into the next secular bull market cycle? The real answer is that we don't know for sure. Hopefully, the question you're asking yourself is, if there is another drop coming, is it really worth taking that risk? Keep in mind that the more you have invested in the stock market today, the less you will be able to act like a capitalist and take advantage of the opportunity to buy when the market dips. In other words, if you are overexposed to market risk when it happens, you run the risk of becoming a victim instead of a capitalist. With today's uncertainty about whether or not the stock market has broken three world records and with so much conflicting information about the state of the economy, those who are retired or nearing retirement must realize that the onus is on them to help protect themselves and be prepared for whatever lies ahead. Now more than ever, you must educate yourself and seek advice from financial professionals that are experienced in helping individuals navigate the complexities of planning and saving for retirement.